Hello, dear viewers. Hey, uh, has anyone ever told you it's a very bad idea to not hold anything in your left hand in Skyrim? Like, there's nothing in the game that would support such a playstyle. Because they sure have told me. It's not entirely true, though, and we can make a very powerful character of superior agility, which keeps one hand free and fights only with a one-handed sword. We can do it thanks to a very specific weapon and gauntlets, a good combination of perks, a slightly unconventional use of sneak and a minor exploit of game mechanics. The end result is remarkably strong in most combat scenarios and has only a very minor issue when confronted with a dragon, but we will get to that later in the video. Open combat in Skyrim is usually pretty straightforward and brutal, but this nimble warrior relies on his reflexes and cunning while still being able to face his enemies with no cowardly tactics of stealth and archery. So, to quote a much greater YouTuber, let's dive on in. You were born and raised in Dragonstar Hammerfell, where you've risen from poverty to a stable life of a town guard. Your mastery of sword combat was already quite impressive in your teens, and you kept improving yourself, making your friends from the City Watch quite jealous of your skills. Before you reached the age of 25, you were already rumored to be on your way to nobility, which is rare enough to make you an object of gossips and ill-fated whispers all over your city. Someone has brought charges against you to the local authorities, accusing you of spying for the Thalmor and supporting this claim with a ridiculous remark about your swordsmanship being empowered by some secret elven magic. Using your influences in the city's elite, you quickly established the name of your accuser, and it turned out it was your childhood friend. One that joined the guard with you, but has never been promoted or rewarded with any honors. At first you were sure you will be able to defend yourself in court without any trouble, but later you learned the family of your accuser actually pulls much more strings in the city that you ever knew. So you challenged the man to a duel to be done with it, with all this madness before every influential person around is turned against you. The outcome of the duel was obvious from the start and even though your opponent has had his blade poisoned, he died in one swift slash. It was not the end though, the rumors and accusations were flowing by themselves. It was only a matter of time when it happens again. Disillusioned and bitter, you fled Hammerfell for Skyrim, a land of many opportunities for anyone who knows how to fight. You entered that land with the knowledge that justice is blurry and uncertain, and if it exists at all, it can only be delivered at a point of a sword. Your sword. <gasps> so, perhaps I should start by saying there is a few fairly strong arguments for using a one-handed sword only. First, Weapon bashing deals more damage than shield bashing and is quite often less costly in stamina, as the stamina cost is related to the weight of the items. And for the same reason, it's better for your stamina to bash with a light weapon than it is to bash with two handers. This means uh, bashing with a sword or dagger can keep your foes in almost constant recoil, which means they can't do anything to harm you. 
Then I should tell you, if you don't know it yet, that there is a way to utilize the glorious shield charge perk without a shield, which combined with the silent thrall sneak perk lets you throw them in the air while swiftly moving around the battlefield and avoiding hits. Constant sprinting, bashing and power attacks will be the crux of your combat style and therefore the best race for this build would be the Red God, for the incredible adrenaline rush daily power, replenishing your stamina pool at 10 times the normal speed for an entire minute, which is, with your combat style, a difference between life and death in boss fights. An orc would also work quite well with the Berserker Rage power, I imagine. The attributes ratio displayed on screen will make you quite tanky while retaining the ability to hit hard and remain nimble in most fights. Just remember to prioritize your health first and start working on your stamina at level 10 or so. You will be more than fine as long as you stay within the 5 to 4 ratio before level 30. The best standing stone for you will be the Lord Stone, and it is almost essential since due to the lack of enchanting and alchemy in this build, you will have almost no ways to increase your magic resistance, and the plus 25 to armor will in the end let you get close to 500 armor rating, which means you will be quite tanky even without a shield or heavy armor. You may also consider the Shadow Stone in early levels to give you a chance for a sneak attack with your sword, and you may also opt for storing the Atronach Stone ability in the Ethereal Crown, which you can then wear occasionally when confronted with dragons or mages. The skill set for this one is very intuitive, and you will not be required to spread your perk points across too many skills, which is always good as it ensures an even progression and it doesn't force you to grind anything. So, in the one-handed skill tree you should take everything in the middle, possibly including Paralyzing Strike, which is highly situational, but your go-to weapons are all more or less late-game quest rewards, so it is good to have an additional trick up your sleeve. Then take all the ranks of Bladesman just to increase your average damage per second. It is quite a fitting perkage for an absolute swordsman such as yourself. Yes, perkage. It's a thing. Then you are going to need almost every perk in light armor, which should come as no surprise. You need a high armor rating since you are a warrior and a one with no shield. Windwalker is especially valuable to you because stamina regeneration makes your combat style sustainable at all times. Skip the matching set, as your armor will never match. Believe me, I tried. In the smithing skill, the two indispensable perks are Steel Smithing and Arcane Blacksmith, which will allow you for the full improvement of your staple weapon, the Windshear Scimitar. Elven smithing is unnecessary but required for the advanced armor spark, which lets you fully improve your chest piece. The armor shown in the video is from the Immersive Armors mod, and it does require advanced armors for max improvement. If you want to go without mods, the sleeved variant of the Downguard armor also looks amazing on this guy, and it also requires said perk. Then, if you decide to use Chillrend, which I didn't, but it is a very good weapon for this build, you should also take the Glass Smithing perk. Now for the skills that may be slightly less intuitive in how they are used for this character. You will have some use for all the displayed perks, even though your combat style is not that stealthy. Which is, by the way, the reason for taking only one rank of stealth. So, muffled movement will be eventually rendered obsolete by the Predator's Grace boots you absolutely need to find for this build, but in the early game it will give you a bit of an advantage in the form of a chance for delivering a successful backstab from time to time. 
Silence works even outside of sneak mode, which means that when fully muffled by your predator's grace, you will have the element of surprise on your side without any actual sneaking. Now, one of the coolest things in the build is the ability to sneak attack mid-combat, which is possible through the Shadow Warrior perk. You will have to time your attack and crouch perfectly, which requires some practice, but the sense of pride and accomplishment you will feel is tremendous. And uh, last but not least, the Silent Roll perk, which gives you the leaping attack ability when combined with the critical charge, but also works insanely well with the shield charge perk in the block tree. But wait, 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 you said no shield, right? No shield for this build. Well, yeah, it's a no shield shield charge which you can do as long as you don't use the unofficial patches. In order to pull it off, you have to start sprinting first and then tap your block button repeatedly. Remember, don't hold, tap. It may look a bit goofy as far as the animation goes, but it works wonders especially with Silent Roll. There is a question of the Block Runner perk, which does work without a shield and goes perfectly with your swift and nimble approach to combat, but it requires you to waste two points for perks you can't really use. However, since this build can be completed at level 40, that's assuming you skip all the perks I deemed optional, it may be a good idea to round up your build in this way if you plan to stay with this character for longer. The build gets more and more impressive and useful as the specific set of items is acquired. All the items I am about to talk uh, are essential, and sadly they are all uniques, found in a specific location or granted as a reward for a quest, or in fact a quest line. So you will be forced to plan your journeys and adventures ahead. The staple of the build, one of the best 100 swords in the game, is of course the Wind Shear. Bearing a very unique enchantment allowing you to throw your enemies around with a weapon bash and stagger your enemies on hit. The enchantment is infinite, which means you will never need any soul gems for it, and the weapon itself can be tempered to full extent with only two perks in smithing. This weapon alone is a reason to play a duelist character like this. On occasion, you will need to switch to the Nightingale Blade, which will be your main mean of healing and it also provides you with more stamina. Remember, however, to wait with the required quest until level 36 or maybe even 46 if you have the patience for it, in order to acquire the best variant of the weapon. Your most crucial armor piece will be the Predator's Grace, a unique set of boots, which may be a bit hard to find, so hopefully I will remember to leave a link to a guide in the description. The 100% muffle will let you stay undetected even when not sneaking, and it also means that your enemies will lose track of you instantly when you crouch and have your Shadow Warrior pack unlocked. So basically, these boots make Shadow Warrior more useful and reliable while also giving you a slight increase in your stamina regeneration. Swell shoes indeed. Then you are going to need your ancient shrouded gloves, or just the standard shrouded gloves in the early game. With the backstab perk, you will deal 12 times the normal damage with your sword with a successful sneak attack and you will be able to sneak attack in the middle of open combat. I know I said it already, it's just too awesome. The Locket of Sand Jube may be a bit annoying to find, but the Fortify Stamina enchantment is very fitting for you, and it is one of the two necklaces in the game that count as a light armor piece. And in Special Edition, you can upgrade it with a gold ingot, to get a tiny bit more armor rating. 
Last but not least, I went for the Diadem of the Savant as my circlet, because I really, really wanted him to keep his head uncovered. It's not a complete waste of an item slot, because this circlet also counts as a light armor piece, and as such allows you to benefit from the custom fit perk. Now, you may also go for a separate set of items for dragons and mages. You may find boots with some elemental resistance enchantment, a ring of magic resistance and worthy ethereal crown with the Atronach stone ability stored in it. The last solution will mean you lose your custom fit benefit and thus some armor rating. So alternatively, you may go for Altar, the Dragon Priest mask bearing an enchantment of 20% resistance to frost, fire and shock. It is a heavy armor piece, but it will still give you some armor rating while increasing your chances against magic attacks. However, the best way to protect yourself against the Dragon Breath is of course the Become Ethereal Shout. You may choose to play this character with no shout at all and stay away from the main quest, but should you choose to go for it, the Marked for Death Shout and the Slow Time will both be a perfect fit with your combat style. This build is a fairly original warrior, if I may say so myself, a swift and nimble one, which relies on mobility and parrying, like a proper duelist. It is an archetype you can come across in fantasy books and movies, but may be quite hard to emulate in Skyrim, so I decided to use all my Skyrim knowledge to show you how it can be done. Not that it is that unusual or unheard of, but it may require a bit of uh, planning ahead and practice, so I thought it deserves a video on my channel. The combos, the backstabbing, mid-combat, the silent roll, shield charges, the wind shear enchantment, <laughs> it all works very well with each other and creates a playstyle that may be addictive. I seriously couldn't stop um, um, playtesting this one. In fact, I think uh, I will do some more playtesting, just in case you know. And that's it for today. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video and will enjoy the build, should you choose to try it yourself. If you do, remember to leave a comment and come back for more Skyrim builds later. We will see each other again. Bye bye.